this past week, they got really excited and dropped a couple open source things. One of the things they released is Stable Diffusion version 1.5, which wasn't supposed to be released. Like Stability AI really, like put a DMCA takedown for them, but they actually that they they uh, got rid of that. They realized that they're all on the same side. Um, but they also released this cool image to image demo and tool that I can send in the chat. Um, and what image to images is, is if I were to upload an image here real quick, so say, um, let's take one of the ones that I'd done before. All right. So yeah, let's get, let's, we can get Rocco. Um, and if you, oh, actually, I don't know if it, it'll work with a transparent background. Oh yeah, that no, should. Cool. Um, all right, maybe not with a transparent background. Let's try this again. So if we were to take um, something like our dog, right, and then we wanted, um, I don't know why the space is bugging out on me right now. All right, let's try this one more time. All right, so if we were to drag over one of our con some of our content, um, we can, all right, I don't know why space is whacking out on me, but um, all right, maybe not in this space. It might have, I think they made some changes to it last night, but image to image um, in general is, well, I'll show you, um, they've got, They've got an image that you can go into and you can erase content out of um, and you know you can have it generate what you want it to, to create. So for example, you can make a drawing like that and add a prompt of like a fantastical um, kind of, you know, uh, a fantastical environment and it can automatically populate the content there. Um, and I wish I could have showed you guys that demo where you guys can use it um, yourselves. But once I get that link working, um, I, I'll share that again. But that was just one one pretty cool thing that th there's working. Another one this past week was the clip interrogator. So people on Twitter were roasting themselves and other people with this because you can drop in any image and it'll tell you what it thinks that that image is of. So people were putting in pictures of them getting roasted on how old uh, clip thought they were um, or you know whatever. Uh, and, and I thought it was pretty cool. This is uh, the clip interrogator output of Nouns Glasses. Um, what was cool like this, you know, I mean, what cool about this for me, um, was looking at kind of like the description, um, you know, I, I had never heard of Carl Gerstner, for example, and, and then looked it up and, and saw that he's got some pretty, pretty cool art. Um, so kind of sent me down a little bit of a rabbit hole. Uh, but you know, I think that that's really cool that we, I, I haven't really seen, I've, I've been looking for a tool like this for a while for a you know, variety of different use cases. Um, but you're know, being able to kind of, you know, just drop an image in. Um, yeah, that, and get a description, I think is really powerful, not only for just, you know, my own understanding, but, you know, then take this output and you can put it back into an image generation, um, tool, kind of like this, uh, dream studio. And if you guys are interested in this, drop the link here as well. Um, but I pump, I put in that same description from, um, the clip interrogator and put it in here. And you as you can see, you know, we got something that's not totally dislike the, uh, the content that we were just looking at. Um, so, you know, I think that's, that's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty interesting stuff. And then last thing before I get into kind of our call, um, you know, it seems like we've got some people that are starting to join now, which is great. Um, if anyone has a background in programming and is interested in learning about stable diffusion or, um, you know, learning how to build with PyTorch and learning how to, um, use machine learning. You can, I would really, really recommend this course from Fast AI. The, court, the, the instructors are some of the best in the world. You know, everybody that I know that's gone through this course has really, really loved it. Um, there are videos, they're going through a deep learning, um, a foundation from deep learning to stable diffusion course right now. It's on YouTube right now because um, I think they're going to add the whole course in um, 2023 for free onto this page, but there are the lessons um, kind of below that, that they're working through now. Um, we definitely recommend checking out some of this stuff because their, um, yeah, their content's incredible. There's some music generation too, um, that I was going to show you guys. That's, that's pretty sick, but I can just drop, drop a link to this guy. Um, because I think we should, we should start getting into it. Looks like we got enough people.
Awesome. Cool. Shep, do you uh, mind if yeah, what's... do you mind if I just do a couple of quick housekeeping before you uh, please, get started? Please. Awesome. Just want to let those uh, who are joining on Twitter know that it is a listen only simulcast that we are doing uh, from an event being held in our Discord. So if you check the nest up top of the, the spaces there, you can click the link and join us on Discord uh, for a more interactive experience. That way you can see Alex's screen and learn everything that uh, Nouns AI has been working on. Uh, if you're only able to join us on Twitter, that's fine too. Uh, you can listen into the conversation, and if you have any questions, just reply to the tweet up top, and I'll keep an eye out and relay those questions over to Shep. And uh, without further ado, I'll pass it over to uh, the hero Shep, Alex, here, to tell us all about what Nouns AI has been working on. Sweet. All right. Um, so I'm going to kick us off just talking about, you know, our general high level of what we're working on. Um, and then I'm going to pass it over to the killer team that's been making a ton of progress um, already. I mean, they've already got a lot of stuff done. Huge shout out to Steve Honk and Martin who have been helping out here. Um, so yeah, so just for some context for you guys of what we're looking for, what we're working on for the Nouns AI pod. So we've got three pillars. Um, we have a content hub. We've got uh, AI media, and we've got um, a, a pillar of trying to get you know both of those things adopted, right? And, and get other find other partnerships and other ways to implement AI within um, within the organization within within nouns. So, um, what that means is a few things. I'm going to start with the content hub. This is one that I'm really excited about. This is what started kind of like this research, and is only more important now that we've kind of separated across different discords. So I'll let, um, I'll let Steve talk a bit more about, uh, about it, but I'm just going to pull up, you know, our, our staging environment to kind of show you guys. Um, oh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk through it then. I also know we got some people on Twitter. Um, but the, the goal of this content hub right now is we've got all of our, um, proposals that are coming directly from down WTF. Um, and they're getting summarized into five bullet points into on our knowledge hub, right? Um, now all the content from from there is queryable. Um, you can look across all of the proposals and potentially search across that information. Um, we're also creating a self service audio tool that um, Steve will talk talk about a bit. That's going to enable you to be able to whether you have a podcast or now Square or a YouTube video. Um, you can upload that, and you can get a. Uh, that, that will take the content that you've created, it'll turn it into text and then summarize it into the key points there. Um, obviously, you know, these summarizations, these transformations aren't gonna be perfect and we're gonna be looking for user feedback um, to go in and change those to make them more reflective of the actual content within. But the high level concept is that once you now have this audio content, suddenly that if you make all of that database searchable, right? Now, not only, you know, now if you search um, Noun Square, for example, you're not only going to see the proposal where Noun Square originated from, but you're also going to see any call anytime Noun Square is mentioned. Um, that's really helpful for someone who's potentially looking to try and find additional information with Noun Square, um, and also really helpful for people who are onboarding, especially if we can make sure that any content that we upload there. Um, and any content that, that's that's added, uh, Davin, uh, Davin, my friend, you've got a hot mic. Awesome. Oh, sorry about that. Cool. Um, I'm not messing around, everybody. So. I, just, I just muted him. <laughs> double going? double muted. muted. <laughs> all right. Um, sweet, thanks, guys. Um, but if all the content's in there and all queryable, you know, you can search for it uh, based on you know, like like either historic mentions or current mentions. And we're building that out. Um, and what we're gonna be using to search is a really cool tool called Operand AI um, that we've already um, that we've already talked to the founders about um, who are, which is a, it's a semantic search tool. Uh, they have an API that's really good at semantic search. What they do is they, um, if, you, if you have the little plug in here, you can index their website and it, they have a dashboard that across all the things that you that indexed all of the sites, you can search across all of it. Um, and they're gonna let us use their search API um, for us to semantically search across our database. So as well as having, um, you know, as well as having uh, intelligent question and answer. So you can ask questions to a bot um, regarding all of the information that we've got in our, in, in the database. So it should be able to answer from things like proposals, um, and, and you know, 
immediate in the immediate audio content. So for example, if we were to search um, something like GPT, for example, you know, I'd be able to find where GPT was mentioned in the pages that I looked at. And this is not, you know, very similarly, we're going to have um, a database that starts with initial proposals and for um, <laughs> we're, we're seeing screenshots that notion pay. All right, cool. Um, for proposals and audio content, but we can also index a bunch of other, a bunch of other information, right? So from, um, from potentially like discord server specific channels that are given access to Rocco, um, you know, that content would then be searchable from one central location and have links to the original, um, discord where that conversation came from to be able to have people continue a conversation um, from maybe from one discord to another or maybe adding discourse in there um, and so you can it's really just a platform that's going to be able to connect um, all of you know hopefully a bunch of different downish content so before i get into the rest i guess I know i've been ranting for a while um you know maybe i'll turn it over for steve who's been working on this and making some progress here to talk a little about what what he's been working on Hey, what's up? Um, cool. So I, I don't, um, hey, Shep, if you want to bring up staging, I, I didn't update it yet with the audio stuff, but um, I can still give a quick overview for what will be ready. Um, actually, this week, I, I'll have it, the, the components up today, just not necessarily, they, it won't be integrated yet with Honk's work, which is going to create summaries from the audio bits. But um, ultimately, uh, uh, what I'm going to have ready this week is the capability to upload. You're basically going to be able to upload any audio stream, any any audio type file, uh, matching mime type of anything related to audio. Um, with it, it's going to upload directly to um, S3. Um, you know, we do pre-signed URLs. Uh, yeah, that, that's like a really quick first pass of it um that'll be done that'll be up today and then what will happen is is um i'm going to create an api shortly after for honk to hit to check for he'll be he'll be um, ultimately looking for new objects being created and he'll create summaries and send them back this way so i plan on building out a user interface with martin's help um that'll have all the audio you uploaded with uh the correlated summaries for it um, so that, that's, that's the ultimate near term goal. And then the, the front page of staging.roga.dev, which I'm gonna start, you know, uh, moving people away from staging at some point, probably this week onto just roga.dev. Is that down right now? Yeah, it's down right now. Okay. Um, that's fine. I'll bring it back up afterwards. Uh, uh, again, staging is where I break stuff, which is why I'm going to have roga.dev. Uh, where I don't break things and that'll, you know, that'll be where everything's always up. But, um, yeah, so the idea is to just get quickly, uh, get reviews for, for, um, get summaries rather for your audio, um, in the most convenient way possible. Um, so I'll have that, uh, UI all done and wired together in the next day or two. Sweet. Um, yeah. And to talk a little bit more about that too, I know Martin, Martin, let's Martin's been, um, has offered, come to offer to help us, you know, is an awesome, awesome thinker kind of like from a product point of view, uh, and is really helping us kind of put together a vision for what, um, this page could look like visually in the short term and the midterm, and then also what, you know, uh, kind of content we can have on it and the impact we could have, uh, Martin, not sure if you wanted to talk a little bit about it. Yeah, I can, uh, is it cool if I share the designs a little bit? Yeah, yeah, please share what we've been up to. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I would have to like quit my Discord and stuff. Do you have access to the uh, Figma yeah, file? I'll pull them up. I'll pull them up. The, um, I can yep. also, yeah, you have it. Yeah, yeah. I'm pulling it up. All right. Let me share my screen. Sweet. Okay, sweet. Yeah, so we started with these more just like high level, like what do we actually want this to look like? And there's also a, a spec in the notion that we were working on of like, what what do we want? At first at the top is kind of like a first pass I took at it and then had to zoom all the way back out and say like, you know, what do we actually want this site to be and what do we want to be for? So uh, I'll just run through it really quickly. In the top left here, we just kind of have uh, the page that'll be the prop reviews, um, you know, Rocco's review, the tweets, 
the summaries that people are able to upload themselves, right? And so you'll be able to see who contributed it and when. Um, and then on the right is the edit screen of being able to edit other people, edit the review that Rocco had and ask Rocco to, you know, review uh, the audio or the proper whatever the content is again. And the idea is for that page, page to really be reusable so that we don't have to design a bunch of different pages for audio or text or whatever it may be. Um, and then at the bottom is just a mock-up of the upload screen. But if you want to go to the other page, um, Alex, yeah, the high fidelity one. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, if you want to just zoom in on the first page here. So, yeah, this is the first pass I took yesterday on just making it actually kind of clean. Uh, in the top left, there's kind of a... I actually took the nouns goggles and centered them a little bit more on the computer just because I thought it looked a little bit better than the way it is in the actual noun, uh, but a very small thing. And then, uh, yeah, some of the designs, you can scroll through to the right, um, just kind of a higher fidelity version of this. What it does, it look like when someone connects their wallet, if they don't have access, um, the uploading your audio, and then um, the final thing you yeah, have just submitting so still need to work on that but that, that was kind of a first pass on what that could look like and using tailwind um kind of components to make it all uh reusable and and yeah i come more from a product management background so diving a little bit more into the design uh, has been super fun awesome awesome thanks martin um cool so before we before we keep going and get into like the second main pillar um wanted to pause here to see if we had any questions you know love seeing Discussion in the chat, Joshua. Thanks for um, you know offering to help with graphic design. We may take you up on that here or there. Um, you know, that sense of ideas over, but uh, you know, appreciate that. Any any questions we've got about kind of like the knowledge hub? You know, we're, we're in the beginning stages. Um, our our goal is to get this minimum viable product working, um, where we've got you know proper views, which we've already got working, and then we got audio reviews, and then we've just got a, a, a platform that's easy for anyone here um, to use. And we're just going to make sure that um, you know it's it's nounish content that's being uploaded. You know, we don't want to we want to make sure that all the content that's you know being summarized and being being uploaded there it, it is relevant to um, to nouns. Like that's kind of kind of the point there. And then once we've got that working, we can add search and intelligent Q and A. Um, and at that point, you know, you guys can expect to have kind of like that first MVP version. And from there, you know, we can talk start talking about what what else to add, right? Like we can make those searchable, like the audio and the props. Then we start being able to add in Discord channels or discourse, right? Or um, you know, content from you know, YouTube, right? So like maybe we've got weekly weekly content that goes goes to channels, or we want to subscribe the nouns feed to a YouTube channel. And as we start to add more and more content, right, it's going to become a little bit overwhelming to deal with all of it. Um, but that's where we start to focus on curation to help people, and then also in theory, um, the goal is to have like a self a self service way to curate. The type of information that is coming in um, for your feed specifically, but always maintaining the ability to drill back down to the original content and find um, the person that connect that that was responsible or in mentioned in that content. All right, I'm going to keep it going. Then, if we don't get questions, um, I hope I'm not missing any on the Twitter spaces. Um, but no questions cool. yet. If, if we, no questions yet sweet. from Twitter. And if, uh, anyone, keep if anyone does have a question, just unmute your mic. I'll keep an eye while Shep is talking so I can call on you. All right. Cool. All right. Um, next pillar. Next pillar is AI generated media. So this is really exciting too, um, but in a totally different way. So um, as you guys might like, I, I hope you guys saw the AI, um, AI pod promo video that was created with, um, with this tool called Stable Diffusion Videos that enables you to kind of um, have these different prompts. So I'm just gonna pull up this example here. Um, so for Stable Diffusion Videos, so, er what we're talking about with Stable Diffusion is this text to image creation of content. Um, and in Stable Diffusion videos, there's a way to walk from one content to another. So for example, from hey, Blueberry hey, Chef, to get a two- Is it possible yeah. to show that video? I think there's probably some people here who haven't seen it and it's so good. The AI pod promo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it.
All right. Don't gotta ask me twice. <laughs> Let me share my screen. What sound? So this is all created with AI. Yeah. So this is our not yeah. It's it, all the script is created by AI. Um, the voiceover is AI, and a lot of the visuals are. Um, so it was, it was, it was fun to make it. All right. Let me know if you can't hear it. This promo script, the voiceover, and most of the visuals were all generated. It's a little quiet, but we can hear it. If you can turn the volume up, it'd be good. Less than a day. We want to put these tools in your hands. In a world where the average person is bombarded with over 5,000 ads a day, it's hard to stand out. But there's one group that's always on the forefront of creativity and innovation, always coming up with new ways to get people's attention. Nouns DAO. For years, they've been creating some of the most viral content on the internet. From the noggles to animated shows, they've always found new and creative ways to get people talking. And now they're back with a new proposal, the Nouns AI pod. This prop is to fund three months of focus on continuing the research of our resident AI researchers. They've already got working voice to text, summarization, and content generation pipelines. They'll be working on further empowering Roko to be an AI secretary slash assistant for the DAO, generating nounish rich media and empowering other pods. So what does the future hold for the nouns? If this proposal is funded, they'll be able to continue their work in pushing the boundaries of what's possible. They'll be able to make tools that give us all superpowers and help other organizations do the same for their participants. So let's help them continue their work in making the world a more creative and innovative place. Vote yes on the nouns AI pod. So good. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks for humoring me. Um, cool. So to show you guys, everyone, like, everyone listened, by the way, to that video and did vote yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, cool. So to show you guys how we made this, right? So this is kind of behind the scenes. Um, this is kind of like my testing grounds where I've got two different props, right? With different seeds here that I'm testing. And each one of these prompts and their associated seed creates one of these two images. So this is the first image and that's the second. So um, this first image is related to this prompt and associated with this seed. And this second image is associated with this prompt and this seed. And so as a result, how I made those first 41 seconds of video were by entering timestamps, seeds, and content, right? And so what we're going to do for you guys is build a tool that makes it really easy for you guys to experiment with creating visual content with these words, right? And create like a bunch of different pictures. Um, each one has a specific seed and you can choose the image with the right, the seed that you want and add it to a kind of timeline. And so you guys can then storyboard a, a, a movie almost with, by having individual stills at each frame that you want it to go to want it. And just by passing in kind of like those frames, we'll be able to create uh, a video content that automatically generates and goes between the different frames that you've created. And an additional feature that we can do on top of that and make sure that the sync of movement uh, or the, the, the pace of movement is in sync with the audio as it progresses. Um, so it, it would you know, serve really well as, as like music um, music visuals or, um, you know, even audiobooks, I think would be, would be really, um, yeah, really powerful. And so on top of that, and so Honk and I are working a lot on that right now. Um, you know, Honk's been diving deep into research, um, and then trying to get this implemented and working with actual like user interfaces. Um, you know, last night we were working together to try and get our server rented and provisioned from Google cloud, um, which we got working this morning. So, you know, we're, we're in a, in a pretty good spot and I'll turn it over to Honk if, if you want to talk a little bit more about it. Hey guys. Um, so I can share my screen real quick. Honk, do you mind telling our Twitter listeners? Cause we've got quite a few that just joined telling them how they can come. Uh, join the conversation if they want or that they can't uh, they can only listen in on twitter uh go for it 
Okay. Yeah, just a few people have joined here on Twitter. Just want to let you know this is a simulcast of an event that's going on in Discord. So click that link in the nest if you'd like to join us on Discord. Otherwise, you're welcome to listen in here and just comment any questions above, and I'll keep an eye out for them. Thanks, Hunt. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know if y'all can see my screen. Um, yep. Can see yeah. But uh, so this is actually my first time getting a stable diffusion uh so we're really getting Stable Diffusion app like running locally. Um, this is Stable Diffusion 1.5, which is the most recent thing. Um, and this is something that allows you to basically run this on your local machine. I'm running on Apple Silicon, not NVIDIA. Uh, there's, no, there's no NVIDIA GPU or anything like that. So things are a bit slow. Uh, so the general idea is to be able to have some sort of UI similar to this, something very simple, where somebody can enter in information, um, or sorry, a prompt, um, and we can hook this up to our own uh, GPU running on Google, cl uh, Google Cloud um, through an API. And then so th this whole process, um, but generating these four images on my local machine took five minutes. It'll take a few seconds with uh, GCP, so or with our own um, uh, infra. So generally speaking, the idea is to be able to have a UI where somebody can enter a prop and select some of these and basically put them into a list um, or basically a row or column or whatever and put spaces between them or delays and then utilize that same sort of dream booth video stuff that Alex had been showing off to generate a video. Um, and so we kind of want to get this up and running as soon as possible, just to allow people to play around with it. I imagine that we can, assuming, um, you know, we can get everything provisioned with the infra and don't have any hiccups there and are able to uh, get an, an a, a simple sort of uh, API setup. We can probably get something for people to play around with here in the next few days, two days or so. Maybe even one, maybe even today. Um, I don't want to overpromise, so because there are a bunch of problems that we can run into. But uh, yeah, that's the the general idea. Um, also, um, I'm going to be doing a few quick updates to Rocco to allow him to support other servers as well. Um, given that now it's Discord is disbanding. Um, so that this, you know, Rocco can obviously be added to now Square Discord uh, to be able to record calls like this. The only thing is that like right now, Rocco kind of just does one thing at a time, uh, not really written to be able to be recording, uh, say a conversation going on in the Noun Square, as well as one simultaneously going on in the Noun Discord. So this is gonna be the process of me kind of reconciling that so that's uh, kind of, you know, what's going on here. Awesome. Thanks, Hong. Um, so that's our second pillar there. Um, nouns media, the like AI generated media. So any, any questions on, on that side of things? All right. All right. We, we, we need a sec for some questions. That's all right. Um, cool. Well, I'll talk about our last pillar here. Um, and our last pillar is one that is actually, that's where you guys come in. That's where we're looking for help. Um, so our last pillar is about getting the tools that we create used, right? So, um, for our knowledge hub, that means working with discords to find the, um, so like the content, the channels, the content channels that they would like indexed, if any, right. Um, you know, finding ways to connect discourse, finding ways to get people to use it and actually create edits because the summarized content is not going to be perfect. We really could use people to create edits of them. Um, and we want to encourage people to do so likely by featuring those edits that people create instead of Rocco's review, um, for a lot of the content, right? Like being able to get human. Um, in the loop, like that's something really important for this kind of uh, AI generated you know, content um, and this kind of push to integrate AI within a community. And really, and th it's one of the reasons I think this is one of the perfect, if not the perfect place to start off a project like this is because we have 
really intelligent people that have a lot of buy-in that are going to be able to use this tool and hopefully get a lot of use out of it. Um, so we're just trying to figure out how to incentivize people to use it more, right? So um, the Knowledge Hub is one, and then the uh, AI-generated media. Um, we think that we're going to be able to create some. Like, we we have already created some pretty 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 looking content like content, and I know that you guys are going to be able to come up with way better stuff than I, than than I can. And so the idea is going to be trying to get this into the hands of all of you all, um, and also incentivize people who are really creative and have a lot of um, who, who could potentially have a big impact or, or spread uh, have a big impact on proliferation. Right? Um, interested in using our tools to create. You know, nounish content that they can then share. You know, things I'm envisioning, working with musicians uh, or producers who have, uh, you know, their own IP. Um, I know we're working with Super Tight Woody already. Very excited about continuing to do that. Um, seeing if we can find, you know, additional people like that um, that are talented, like like he is, to be able to bring music and audio content that they own IP for, so that they can create visuals for it. Um, we can put on some learning sessions while we're putting on that competition to help people really get the best out of the tool, um, and then have them you know, compete for the best content, right? And there can be cash prizes for it, but also hopefully have them post and propagate that content, right? Like have them share their music video and maybe, you know, um, having another another kind of round of competitions where people can take the content that they generate with AI and, you know, edit it, um, do kind of video editing for it. Because a lot of this, you know, not only can it be used as out of the box content, but, um, you know, as, kind of accessories or accessory um, or additional content that can be manipulated, like raw material uh, that can then be transformed into something even more beautiful. So that's, those are the kind of things that we're looking for to try and, um, you know, have a larger impact with the tools that we're creating. So we have a third pillar on community engagement, partnerships, you know, marketing, trying to get people to adopt this tool. Um, and you know, we're still trying to figure out the best way to do so. Right. So that's where we're looking for ideas from you all, uh, participation from you guys yeah, and opportunity, right? Like if you've got an idea on how we can find ways to integrate um, the tools that we're working with, with other parts of the organization, um, and you start investigating that and you really think that you've got a way to um, you know, improve another part of nouns now with, uh, with AI, you know, let us know, right? We, we have, we have some, um, some, some compensation available for people who are able to do those things. Who are those people who are looking to take initiative um, and, and find a way to get you know more people to use this um, or to improve the quality of it? Really, um, I really think that a lot of our goals here are um, what we listed out. What we listed out on our Notion page, which is really maximizing the number of users because if people are using it, hopefully they're getting use out of it, right? Maximize the user satisfaction and the content outputs quality. Um, and then lastly, you maximize views on Nounish AI generated content. So if you've got ideas around those goals, definitely let us know. Yeah, that's so awesome, dude. I mean, it's, it's an interesting perspective looking at it from an artist uh, viewpoint, because a lot of people are looking at this as very black and white, like, oh, I'm a visual artist and this is going to take my job or like, oh, I make music and this thing is going to take my job. But if you look at it from a creation standpoint, right? Like I view it as a, a really cool tool that you can use to make new, a new way of creating art that you might make, you know, or anything really. And so if you, if you look at it from that viewpoint, you know, there's people that don't are are not really good at Google searching, you know, and there were people that like know the keywords to type in to get the result that you want, right? Like if you're looking for a restaurant or whatever you might be looking for, uh, information wise from Google, there's a certain way to type it in. And I think with, with what you guys are doing, you know, honk, it's really exciting to see the sort of the first iteration of some sort of like user experience on this thing, you know, other than sort of knowing code and knowing all the secrets, like chef, you tried, <laughs> you tried to like walk me through it and it's like, wait, I do what now? And then I have to hit this and this, and like, I don't know how, you know, how to code and stuff. So I think once you, you guys are well on your way of unlocking those things. And like that to me is like a really important tool uh, in the creation of these assets. And like, once that starts, the ball is not going to stop rolling. And so, um, you know, I think even a contest for our visual artists who might, you know, create visual art for some of our, our contests for the noun square, like it, it could be really cool to once, once this user interface is completed, like 
to really empower them to be like, hey, like, you know, you're a, an artist that usually draws things or creates things visually. Like, what if you could do it this way? Like, and have a contest for that. That's super interesting. Um, so just, yeah, I and mean, it's also exciting. And, and there's so many different ways to look at it um, that it just kind of lets your imagination start running wild. So thank you guys for doing amazing things. Thank, thank you. No, I, I really resonate with a lot of what you just said. Um, I think that, you know, the way I'm looking at this is it's a way to improve kind of like the minimum. It, it's it's going to just up the quality bar because you're going to be able to get to kind of like that base level of whatever an AI can generate pretty easily. And it's about using your artistic ability to take that and create something incredible. Um, and so it kind of like raises that bar. And then I'm, I'm glad to hear it, kind of like the excitement. Yeah, that, that's our, our mission is to try and get something um, you know, that you guys can use in your hands as soon as possible. So we can just start seeing you know, getting feedback from how people like using it, the tool, how, how, like what, what they, what they get out of it and can iterate from there. One thing that always resonated with me is that Claire Silver, uh, the NFT artist calls herself an AI collaborator, which I always thought was kind of neat. Like she's not, she says, I'm not a, you know, it's not, it's not AI generated art, but it's like a collaboration between myself and, and the GAN that I'm using. I love that. Yeah, that's one of the I think, core pieces. Yeah, I think that's like a really good, good point. And, and to your point, Shep and, and Woody, like framing this correctly as not a replacement, but as an additional tool for creatives and as an assistant, I think is really important language to, to lean into. Couldn't agree more. Um, I think and me personally, I, I'm, I'm not trying to build any replacement, like any AI that replaces people. I, I, I want to build tools that make us better people, you know, like I, I'm, that's, that's what I'm all about. Trying to build tools that help us um, improve ourselves, like that, that make it easier for you to try and like accomplish your goals, like to be able to do the things that you want, right? Like to empower one person to do what might've taken hundreds in the past. Like that's, that's the whole, that's the whole goal. Sam, you had a point during the recent yeah. council call where you were talking about uh, the effects of CGI on, on the movie industry and, and how that affected people's jobs. Do you want to reiterate that if you're able to talk? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, there's a lot of artists right now and that are super opposed to AI. And, uh, you know, I hate to say they're just scared. Um, and it's because they don't understand it. You know, if, if movies had stayed the way they were made in the 1920s with the editing techniques of the time and, and cutting and splicing together film, and if they uh, turned up their nose at, say, After Effects and stuff, I mean, a lot of them did, you know. <laughs> uh, and there were a lot of people that lost their jobs. But if you look at the credits of any movie now, especially a Marvel movie, you'll see that there's far more people employed and i see the same thing happening uh with ai you know cream will always rise to the top <clears throat> people that utilize ai that have been less artistically inclined they go to uh leveling up as a person that's able to match uh their taste with the ideas that they have in their head but those that already have artistic inclinations um, that know, you know, whether it's about the golden ratio or, or thirds or different periods of art, all of a sudden they become quite superhuman in the, in the results that they have. Um, and that just comes with, you know, knowledge, the more knowledge that you have, the, the more efficiently and effectively you can get the results that you want. Um, I probably went way off base, Tony, because I was... <laughs> No, that's exactly that's exactly what I was referring to, especially the, especially the comment about the the credits and how many people are employed. Yeah, now. I mean, I I was talking to um, Jason Schwartz, who's a uh, director of Bento Box, that was working on a on a movie, and earlier that day he had uh, been trying to establish this scene with the writer and, and two artists, and I introduced him to AI. You know, and I went with something like Mid Journey because it's super you know, easy for people to grasp at the beginning. And he said, well, what was the brief that you gave the artist? And I said, we call those prompts and we do those with clips and got into what it was. So I said, you know, well, what's kind of the tone and, and, you know, out of the artist, who were you thinking of? And he's like, oh, Sid Mead, you know, kind of this Blade Runner and Chicago, you know, this like, but I want neon lights. And I was like, well, let's put all that in there. And I, and I said, now let's 
start to add kind of a structure of hierarchy and what's most important to that. And within, you know, a five minute talk about and then hitting the button in a minute and 30 seconds later, having four amazing results, he's like, holy crap. And he's like, so I can take these and give them to the artists and have them do what they stuff effectively, getting what I want and efficiently getting what I want faster. And I was like, and that's the beauty of AI. Sure. Um, um, I, I apologize that, again, I commented that this is a game changer, yeah? And the reason that's why I say so is, number one, of course, some people think, yeah, AI is going to steal their jobs, but... I personally think art is all about expression. And if we can get the best expression and add on to our imagination or add our imagination onto that expression, we'll be steps forward towards that um, beauty that we all achieve or want to achieve. Um, I remember when I was re reviewing DALI, I don't know if you guys have heard of DALI, that, that AI. Yes. Um, it was already mind blowing as it did, but I was among the that were invited to review it and i was astounded so of course i had friends who were like yo oh, this is just ai this is not going anywhere but like right now people are creating nfts of of um the art that is created by that ai so again for me personally i think this is the this is a step forward it can ease in our work but also give us more grounds to imagine having an ai that can help us create number one dope content with the help of some inputs but also um, retrieve and find content that we would want to find. Um, I think it's a game changer. I think it's a step forward. I think it's adding on to our imagination, uh, testing our limits, testing how far we can think. If we are really um, artistic and creative, as we say we are. Um, but personally, I'm, I'm, I'm in. I love it. I love it. Uh, you guys, you guys are getting me fired up. I totally agree with like what you guys are saying. You know, this idea that we can. I mean, one of the things that that you um, that you were talking about that I think is really important there is, is how you walked them through like that beginning creation of a prompt, right? Like making sure that you have the right content there, um, so that you can create, like you can use these tools and, and and feel like you can get a lot out of it because it does. It feels like magic. It really does. Um, and so you know that we're trying to make sure that we integrate those that kind of concept into it as well, like. You know, being able to use another machine learning model to automatically auto-complete your prompt, right? Because often, um, you know, many people don't know this, but like if you go through and, um, and, and so actually I'll show you guys an example of this um, with something called Prompt Parrot, but say you wanted to create um, a, um, you know, you wanted to create a picture of a dog um, wearing glasses, right? It could just be that. Why would um, Why but, wouldn't you want to do that? Sorry. I said, yeah, why, why, why wouldn't you want to do that? Yeah. <laughs> no reason, no reason. Um, but it can auto-complete with, with terms that are usually pretty powerful uh, for these image generation models, right? So imposing in a business to detailed face, realistic character, you know, whatever. So if we take this guy and drop him in here, um, and then we take the same example from you know, one of these outputs. So let's let's see, on a beach from a video game, you know, this looks pretty cool um so we come over here we see our picture all right like pretty good um it's all right let's see what happens when we jump in kind of like this longer this longer prompt um i think you know pretty so some of some of them some of them better some of them maybe not um but you know i, I think that like this kind of stuff where we're it's going and educating people how to use these tools having info sessions on you know, being able to answer questions because I've definitely learned a lot working with this, after, you know, be working on it for the past kind of like three months. Um, and so hopefully we'll be able to help with people, help people do it. But yeah, I mean, that's why we want to get it in your guys' hands. You guys have incredible creativity. Uh, and I think that that's kind of like the whole, the whole point of this, right? Is, is get a group of people all working on this, all excited about it, um, all bought in so that we can make something that is, you know, uh, that that people use that people want that that makes people happy like that that enables that translation of ideas to visual um or ideas to content right like makes that as easy as possible i think very, it, very into it i think it was 9999 who tweeted recently that uh, prompt craft is the new witchcraft <laughs> i think it was <laughs> was interesting yeah it's the new google foo to be honest that's right i think uh, Shefo had a question earlier uh when we, we were we had a lot of people raising their hands at once. Do you still have a question? 
Shepha? Uh, yeah, um, more just uh, I wanted to actually say hi, Shep. I have uh, had the interesting joy of working with Hong Diddley up to this point. What what a what a genius and an interesting <laughs> person. We, um, no, in all seriousness, the AI is completely incredible. We've actually been using it for about two to three weeks now on a project that's in post-production. Um, Honk and Obtoshi and I have been kind of piddling with it. I actually am going to bring you into a group chat that we're all in for the project. Um, and I would, I would love to kind of expand the conversation around how we can bring more of it into the project, but it, it is really neat to work with. And it's also just super interesting to see you guys continue to, you know, grow it at such a fast pace. Um, really amazing for, for our project, you know, it's helping, um, with some script writing and, um, I would like to look into doing some voiceover stuff with it. We were at one point looking at like Morgan Freeman and Betty White, but we were having, um, a little bit of glitch issues with both of those. So, um, a celebrity element could be really fun as well, but I've just, I'm really enjoying, um, like staying up to date with the AI stuff and just personally wanted to say hello and, and let you know that I'm going to reach out and, and get you in the group chat. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. The voice content, you know, that's something that we experimented with a bit with, um, you know, that AI pod promo, uh, it's definitely possible. There's just, we just want to be like, you know, in terms of prioritization, our, our goal is we want to get version one of the knowledge hub and version one of the competition, like the AI generated media competition out as soon as possible. As soon as that's out, then I, I'll feel a little bit more comfortable with like, you know, taking that, taking a beat, seeing how people are using that and then gathering feedback on what are the new, next features we want to implement, um, where we can have the biggest impact and kind of, you know, continue to just iterate, iterate like that. Uh, but you know, th thanks, thanks for the kind words, you know, I mean, the team team's already talking about just how, how fired up like, they're getting from having everybody, you know, joining these calls, get, like, you know, excited to hear about what we're, what we're doing, you know, it, it gets us excited to keep working on it. Um, so, so thank you, seriously. Cool. I, I right. loved I loved your your comment earlier, Shep, about how it's like magic when you're working with it. It reminded me of one of my favorite quotes uh, from Arthur C. Clarke: "Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic." I've always loved that quote, and it's very applicable here. Definitely, and I mean that that's really how I how I think about this stuff, right? Like I think about it, you know, like in Harry Potter, right? You know, they're a bunch of, bunch of wizards. They all got access to the same spells, but how well you use them and what you can do with them it is up to your own creativity and ingenuity and based on your own unique past experiences um, and background. So you know, that's where people's unique uniqueness becomes an asset, in my opinion. So. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's all I had for this week. Um, <laughs> see you and Ed join. Uh, Ed, Ed, thanks for all the feedback along the way. You're joining right at the end here. But we'll, we'll, for anyone else who's also joining towards the end, um, you know, Tony, been awesome. Um, then we should have a recording of this call that gets that gets uploaded to YouTube that we can share around for anyone that missed it. Um, we'll be doing these calls on a weekly basis, at least for the near future, um, in in this Noun Square Discord, um, simulcast on Twitter. I think this is a pretty good format. Um, but yeah, no, if anyone's got any questions, um, easiest way to reach me is, is follow me on Twitter and, and send a DM. Um, I, those are open. Otherwise, you know, you can, we'll be in the Nouns for Discord and um, I'm sure a few others. But That's thanks everyone for coming and, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next week. What's your Twitter handle? Do you want to put it in the uh, chat here? Uh, for at the Hero Shep. So you guys, anything Hero Shep, that's, that's, that's me, the Hero Shep. And they can also follow Rocco, can they not? They can at now three three five five. Um, you know, we're we're finishing up the um, ability to the the ability to have automated tweets that'll automatically summarize proposals um, into Rocco's review coming out uh, coming out from there. So um, you know, keep keep an eye out for that as well. Can but you yeah, maybe, Rocco? Can you maybe uh, briefly explain before we close here what what's the deal with Rocco? Like, how is Rocco a noun for people that don't know? Yeah. That? Yeah, so so this is what kind of what sparked the whole thing. Um, you know, shout out four one five six who bought noun three five five. Um, you know, the computer head Ethereum shirted noun who is you know he, he wanted to become the first AI participant of nouns. So 
Um, Rocco is kind of our, our figurehead is our embodied personification um, because and the the AI that we want to have aligned with our efforts. You know, Rocco is um, part of Nouns Now. He's one of the no nouns, so wants to make sure that um, you know all of this stuff that we're creating is is Rocco. You know, creating tools for um, the rest of the DAO to to you know be more efficient, right, and, and have a have a bigger impact and have more fun. So Rocco is kind of our, our figurehead here. Um, you know, we're still figuring out exactly how to how to make the best use of it. We want to make sure that um, you know we don't we don't shirk the responsibility of of thinking deeply about how we use a figurehead that is um, you know as special as you know a noun. And so part of that is likely going to be eventually right taking some of those reviews once you feel comfortable about it and voting on chain directly. Um, you know, being able to actually start participating, you know, maybe getting delegates, things like that. You know, people have talked about that in the past. Um, but yeah, Rocco, Rocco is uh, kind of our ambassador there. Awesome. The future is now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Thank you, guys.